Hello and welcome to The Questionable Botanist. I'm Frank McDonough, your Questionable Botanist. I work here at the Los Angeles County Arboretum and Botanic Garden as a botanical information consultant. That means that I answer questions about horticulture, gardening, plants, plant diseases, insects, pests. In fact, I answer thousands of questions of a year on this stuff. So I'm going to give you a couple of questions I had today. Um, actually, one question and one little observation. We're going to take a look at a new type of lawn that's being put in and uh, my brother-in-law's brother's progress with that. So let's first take a look at a question that was brought in today. This is a citrus. I do believe it's a Valencia orange. There's a Valencia orange right there. And you notice the yellowing leaves and the leaves are falling off. And uh, this was brought in to me by a couple from Sierra Madre. And yes, they do have oak trees nearby and they were wondering what the problem was with this, if it was oak root fungus or what it could be. So I did a little investigation, asked them some questions. It turns out there's this huge stump of a dead deodore tree right next door and very close to where this, where they, where they lost a citrus. And this is actually close to where they lost it. This is a citrus that's about, it may be dying, we don't know yet. But this is a problem, let me tell you why. Oak root fungus is a very fascinating fungus. It does a thing where it will encase the stump of a tree that it's killed in an impervious waterproof layer that will preserve inside of it the fungus alive with some enough moisture to get it through whatever hot summer it has to get through here in Southern California. Now when conditions are right, which is usually moist soil in the summertime, this encased stump will produce rhizomorphs. These are tendrils that are attracted to plants that are ailing, plants that are suffering, plants that are under a lot of stress, and it will attack those plants. And so if you have buried stumps or even just non-buried stumps, large buried roots, this will harbor the armillaria and it will make the armillaria much more, um, much more virulent a plant or a fungus than it usually is. So what can this couple do? Well, it turns out that that big, huge, this is an ab above ground stump. It's about nine feet tall from this deodore. It was just kind of, never do this, by the way. Never have a, if you have a tree die in your yard, never cut it off six or seven feet above the ground and just leave it there. You're just asking for fungal trouble. So what to do? Well, what they can do, since they can't get their neighbor to remove it, is that they can excavate all the large roots coming from it on their property. Also, since armillaria is an opportunistic fungus a lot of times, you can make sure that the plants that are in your yard that are there are extremely healthy. And one of the ways you do this is you treat for Phytophthora. What's Phytophthora? Well, Phytophthora is a, an organism, used to be thought of as a fungus, that attacks the roots of a lot of different ornamental plants. Add to that that Phytophthora is increased by planting ornamental plants. In fact, Phytophthora unfortunately is brought in through container plants and so every time you bring a container plant into a your yard or your garden you in increase the chance of bringing more phytophthora in. A lot of uh, nursery material has lots of phytophthora in it unfortunately. And so what do, you, what do you do after that? There is a product you can treat your entire garden with to keep the phytophthora low and that is Agrifos. Very safe for the environment. They're using the Agrifos product to help save the sudden oak death trees in Northern California. So if you treat your garden regularly for a couple of years, and it's just called a prophylactic treatment, a preventative treatment, you, you treat that preventatively for a couple of years, you'll decrease the amount of Phytophthora in your garden, and this in turn will decrease the amount of oak root fungus infestation you will get on your plants. So I recommended the treatment with, also another thing about this, uh, citrus. If you have citrus in your, your yard, it's a good idea these days not to fertilize them too 
frequently. And that's not just because of Phytophthora and our malaria, but that's because a lot of the new insect pests that are attacking citrus, especially the leaf miner, are stimulated by lots of nitrogen on the tree. And so if you can decrease the amount of nitrogen that you're giving your citrus, you can decrease the amount of pests that attack it and decrease the chances that it might be attacked by oak root fungus. Now, really, citrus trees do not need a lot of fertilizer here. And that's because citrus trees here are mostly for personal use. You're not cropping fertilizer or cropping citrus to sell to the market. You're basically going to be giving these away to your neighbors and family. And so instead of giving away six or seven bushels, you're giving away five or six bushels. You know, really, don't need to fertilize your citrus trees that much. Now I have another, uh, another interesting thing I want to show you. This is my brother-in-law's brother. What is that? Is that your brother-in-law cubed or something? I don't know. Anyway, my brother-in-law's brother asked me what he should put as a lawn in his Vista, California home. And I suggested UC Verde buffalo grass. It's a great uh, North American native grass that's been tailored for Southern California in that it doesn't go dormant for as long as regular buffalo grass, and it's shorter than regular buffalo grass, but it still has the same water-saving capability. So he started out with plugs and planted them about six inches apart, and this is about three months ago. And let me show you this, the progress he's made from the time he planted it to now and what it looks like. This is UC Verde buffalo grass. Let me give you, that's actually a couple of weeks after he planted This is his first planting. And what he did is he got rid of all of the weeds in the area using uh, Roundup. Then he planted the, the plugs in using an auger. And I think he planted those, it looks like they're about almost a foot apart. They're quite widely spaced. When you plant buffalo grass this far apart, it's going to take a while to come in because it takes, you know, it has to grow all the way in. It's not available in sod. So that is a problem. So a few weeks later, this is what he has. Notice it's establishing. Notice the little clumps are starting to appear. And then two months after planting, this is what he has. Now this lawn is almost completely in. Now he was wondering why it isn't establishing very fast. Well, there's two things going on. One, buffalo grass is slow growing. That's a good thing when it comes to mowing because it's so slow growing that if you just leave it alone, you don't even have to mow it. It'll grow naturally to two to three inches and you can actually t t three to four inches and you can just leave it be. It'll grow a little taller in the shade he also noticed it's establishing um, a little slow and, it's and a little faster in the sun areas. And he was wondering why. Well, that has a lot to do with the weather we've been having. This is one of the coolest summers on record. The summer before that was cool, too. But 2011, the summer here, is very cool. Not the coolest, but very cool. A lot cooler than normal. And this is what's going to happen because this is native, this grass is native to s the central part of the United States, the Midwest. It is used to summers that are hot and humid. Well, we may have humid, but we don't have hot here. And so this is what's happening. It's a little slow, but this will eventually grow in. It'll probably be in nicely by October. And it will, then you'll be able to water this every one to two weeks, which is pretty darn good for a green lawn like this. Now, uh, one of the drawbacks of this lawn is it has a dormant period, but it tends to have a very short dormant period here in Southern California. Depending on where you plant it near the coast, it may not go dormant much at all. And further inland, if it does go dormant, you can just use a little lawn dye on it for one to two months, that the one to two months that it's dormant, and it'll be just fine. Anyway, that's... That's my brother-in-law's brother's UC Verde experiment. Anyway, that's it for today's Questionable Botanist. Thank you for watching. This is Frank McDonough, the Questionable Botanist here at the L.A. County Arboretum and Botanic Garden, saying goodbye.